I've nothing against superannuation. If people want to put their money into a superannuation fund and pay fees to the super company to look after their money until their retirement, more power to them. But it shouldn't be compulsory. The current setup in Australia is that every worker is essentially forced to pay a percentage of their income into a compulsory superannuation fund. The Australian government outlines a set percentage of employees' income that should be paid into a super account, currently set at 9.5%, but this is set to increase over the upcoming years to 12% in 2025. You don't have to look very far to know that wage growth in Australia has pretty much stagnated, and this has persisted long before the pandemic. Superannuation has simply not helped wage growth. People's salaries are stuck in neutral. An article by the Daily Telegraph, a right-wing tabloid, is saying that compulsory super rises hit pay packets. Their argument is basically that if super goes up, that's a wage increase, but yet recipients won't see the money. Because they won't see an increase in take-home wages, they won't spend it. Therefore, employers have an increase in costs without an increase in sales, which will ultimately result in them having to cut staff. Even the left-leaning ABC News is reporting that superannuation cannot rise without stalling wage growth. The Reserve Bank of Australia believes up to $8 of every $10 of future wage rises could be wiped out as the superannuation rate lifts half a percent each year. But the article I'd like to focus on today is one by The New Daily, stating that optional super would only add insult to injury. Basically, they're claiming that making superannuation optional won't fix Australia's wage stagnation crisis. They admit that there is a wage growth crisis, noting that wage growth is the weakest since the Second World War, and that the pandemic has only made it worse. They also claim that instead of governments addressing this issue by increasing minimum wages or empowering unions, they instead are thinking of cancelling legislated increases to superannuation, or to make those increases voluntary. Superannuation Minister Jane Hume recently blamed the super system for dismal wage growth and now strongly hints the government will abandon its pledge to raise the super guarantee rate to 12%. Anyway, they go on to say that the idea of a trade-off between super and wages reflects the peculiar history of superannuation in Australia dating back to the 1980s when unions were strong, strikes were frequent, and inflation was high. At that time, super was advocated as a way of reducing disposable incomes and taking some steam out of inflation. So under the Accords, unions accepted super as a trade-off for lower wage settlements. Today, the institutional context is exactly opposite. It. Union coverage has plummeted, inflation is too low, and centralised wage setting disappeared decades ago. So no automatic trade-off between wages and super can be assumed, nor is any trade-off visible in historical macroeconomic data. To the contrary, higher superannuation has often been associated with stronger wage growth, as in the late 1990s and early 2000s. And just in case you thought this pro-superannuation rhetoric couldn't get any worse, and in many ways, making super voluntary is more dangerous than cancelling the legislated increases altogether. Millions of hard-pressed workers will be compelled to raid their own retirement funds just to pay their monthly bills. This would actually encourage employers to cut wages. OK, 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 so the New Daily are making it abundantly clear that they love super. But why? Why would a media outlet care either way? Well, if I just unblur the very last line of this article, the New Daily is owned by Industry Super Holdings. So of course, they've got a vested interest in talking up super, and consequently, we probably shouldn't believe a damn word they have to say about it. It would be similar to taking dietary advice from a fast food chain. Over the summer, I've been watching cricket on TV, and I've been bombarded with this ad from Industry Super Funds. Tell me all about the benefits of the rising super guarantee. The ad, of course, drove me batty. First thing that came to mind when I first saw it was, why advertise? Super is already compulsory in Australia. We'll have absolutely no say in the matter whatsoever. Why would industry super funds bother paying all this money in advertising expenses to convince the audience of something they can't change? I know why. Because this isn't about us anymore. This is about the super companies. They have a vested interest in seeing super go up and up and up, just like they say in their ad. They don't want us to think that super is bad. 
They want us to all just go along with it in order to keep their industry rich. Already super funds in Australia total over $2.9 trillion. According to the ABC, industry super funds now control $163 billion more than retail super funds, setting a new record. If you look at the New Daily website, do you think they have anything bad to say about super? Of course not. Superannuation funds shrug off the pandemic to deliver tremendous results. Superannuation sector does not present a market concentration threat, says ACCC. Industry super funds are helping build Australia while increasing your retirement balance. Again, advertising something as being beneficial when we have absolutely no say in the matter. It's really stupid. It's not advertising. It's political campaigning. A super company advertising compulsory super would be like the government advertising roads. Roads are great for driving on, and thanks to the government and the taxation we collect, we have lots of roads. Anyway, I don't like super. I don't care if people want to use it, but I think forcing people to use it is just plain wrong. I'm completely capable of investing my own super in a way that I see fit. I don't need no trillion dollar super industry telling me how good they are. If I don't want to use their services and pay their fees, I shouldn't have to. Super isn't about members anymore. Super is about the self-interested super industry. 